Hello and welcome to Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. If you're new here and you're new to this type of work, I suggest you start with episode one and move your way forward from there. Each episode builds on the last and you'll have a solid understanding of the spiritual world by the time you get to the end. If you're further along in your journey, start at episode 98. Episodes 98, 99, and 100 are going to change the way you see yourself. And if you're ready to step into being a spiritual practitioner or teacher yourself, then roughly episode 200 is the best place to start and move forward from there. Wherever you are in your journey, we're here to help you and guide you to the next level. And uh, unfortunately, today, uh, my co-host, Jewel, is not with us, so I am Kelly Sparta, the Spirit Doctor, and here today with me is Rhiannon Smith. She is a mindfulness master, and she is amazing. I, we were talking before the show started, Rhiannon, you are certified in so many things. Tell, tell the people who, who you're, cert or what you're certified in. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so <laughs> yoga. I have my 500 hours Reiki. I'm a master teacher. I have a certification in happiness coaching, meditation and mindfulness, NLP, hyp hypnosis. Um, I feel like I'm always learning. Actually, honestly, I, I feel like I'm forgetting like three or four of them, but those are the main ones. Those are the main <laughs> ones. Yeah. I know the feeling. Yes. <laughs> People are like, I say something and they're like, oh, that's from the Silva method. I'm like, it is? I remember studying that when I was like 10. But I don't remember anything about it. But clearly I do because it's all in there and people say, oh, that's Silva method. I'm like, okay. <laughs> when you've been studying as long as we have, you know, that just that just happens. You know, you forget more than you remember, but it, it, it sort of sinks into the core of your being and becomes part of you even if you don't consciously remember it, you know? Exactly. And I think for me, it's like I've gleaned, I've taken the stuff that works and practice it so much in my own life that it's, it's embedded in my cells. I just know it. Yeah. 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 So, um, I'm going to talk to you for a minute because, um, a lot of my people are like me and I, and I suck at meditating. I mean, I can meditate. Don't get me wrong. I just don't. There's a difference, right? <laughs> so I, I can do it when I sit down to do it. If, if somebody else is facilitating or if I have a reason to facilitate for others, then I will do it. And I have no problems meditating, but I just, it's, it, it, I've tried many, many times over the years to develop a practice and I finally just gave up. But <laughs> my question to you is how do you do a practice that is a daily practice? What is it? What's the secret? Because you've been doing this for a really long time, right? I've been doing this forever. I've been in love with meditation since I was about nine years old. It completely changed my life. I got more serious about it in my 20s and 30s. And I just, it's a never ending learning journey. But I get this question literally every day in some form. I'm yeah. Sure. Yeah. And my big thing is if you feel that way, you're probably starting too big. Even 15 minutes for people is too big. And to sit for 15 minutes when you're so used to going, 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 constant stimulation, having a million distractions is impossible for almost everyone. So literally yeah. 30 seconds to a minute of stillness is the place to start to start that habit. And also, I feel like a lot of people think meditation should look a certain way, that you should be able to stop your thoughts. I hear that all the time. I, I meditate, but I'm just so filled with thoughts I gave up. I'm like, oh my God, I've been doing this for 28 years, something like that. And I'm still filled with thoughts. I mean, it's just, that is what our brains do. So having something that you enjoy doing, mantra, even movement, walking meditation, I think those are the two keys to practice. Doing a form of meditation that you love to start with, to start with, because I do think it's about finding um, what will bring you to the next level. So you always want to be changing it up. But to start with something that you just enjoy for like a minute or two. That's it. Yeah. 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 So when I gave up trying to do the traditional meditation, um, what I went to was I take 
time for stillness in the morning because my biggest challenge wasn't the sitting of it, but the stopping to sit it, right? That was, that, that was and remains my hardest point because I'm always like, you know, oh, well, I'll do this and then I'll do that. Da, 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 blah, 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 right? And I'm always going, going, going. And so what I found was useful for me is that I do it before I open my eyes in the morning. And so if I haven't gotten out of bed, if I haven't opened my eyes, then the day hasn't started and I shouldn't be anywhere other than where I am in bed, in stillness, in quiet. And I'm already close to that theta state because I'm uh, in bed, right? <laughs> I'm already in that, that, that brainwave state, which is, you know, alpha, but, um, but it's close enough to get me to that, that space that I can just be in stillness. And I, even now, I mean, I can meditate for, uh, you know, an hour if I wanted to, but I, I usually last like two to five minutes, which is generally sufficient, you know? So, yeah. yeah and I, but that morning time is perfect because nothing is going to disturb you, especially if you get up really early like I like to get up before the sun rises but even even just in a normal everyday life having a few minutes to just listen to silence is perfect and I love that you say before you even open your eyes especially if you can catch that period of time before you even move like you've mm -hmm. woken up you know you're awake your eyes are still closed don't move and tap into that silence it's magical and you're totally right about not needing an hour when you yeah. are starting i think you need a little bit you need the small time then in the middle you need more time because you're looking to sort of ascend for lack of a better word but when you're when you've been on the spiritual path for a while you only need a few minutes you don't need big long yeah. periods of time yeah because you're not in that same state that you are trying to get away from in the beginning, right? And that's the reason why, right? Because you're you're in you're in flow more often the further along on your journey you are, right? Exactly. So so what is the benefit? Why would someone want to start a meditation and mindfulness practice? So for me, the biggest benefit is that for lack of a better word, sometimes I don't like the word trigger, but I simply don't get triggered almost at all anymore because I've been doing it so often. I mean, that's a huge claim, but it's it's the truth. And I, I think yeah. just in our modern world, we have so much coming at us all the time. And it's so easy to fall into the trap of letting life have control over us. And when we meditate, we are mastering ourselves and we are deciding to be in control of our emotions, our thoughts, our actions. It gives us something to come back to that stillness. That is powerful. Your presence is your power. Your stillness is your power. Who's the most powerful person in the, in the room? The person who's the calmest, the most centered. That's what meditation gives us. It's an amazing gift. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would, I would wholeheartedly agree with everything you just said. So um, the, the challenge for people, of course, is that when they get quiet, all the things that they weren't, that they were trying not to pay attention to get loud. Yeah. Yeah. So what do they do? With so that? that's great. That is actually beautiful. You're giving it space. And that's actually what I recommend to people. Don't try to push it away. You don't want to repress that. That's what you've been doing your whole life. And it's never worked. It's about actually opening up your mind, your heart, your body and softening and allowing it to be there. One of the big meditations that I do with my group is I have them actually breathe into their third eye center into the center of their brain and actually open up and allow all the thoughts, welcome them in because they, they want to have space, all of that repressed stuff that you just keep shoving it down. It's, it's got, it's going to be creating a lot of blocks in your life and your body illnesses, all that stuff. So meditation seems like, okay, that I want to avoid this because all this stuff is now coming up, but it's always been there. It's just now you're giving it the right. space to process. Yeah, it's magical. Yeah. Well, and it is, it is. And 
You know, everybody comes into this world looking for the magic pill that's going to make them all powerful, right? And the magic pill that makes you all powerful is recognizing that you are the only thing keeping you from your power and working through all the, the bullshit that you're telling yourself that says, I can't do it. And mindfulness and meditation are a great way to do that. They're also a stepping stone to the stillness that you were discussing, which is a different thing. It's a different energy, right? So meditation is often seen as, you know, clearing your mind. You're clearly doing the next layer of that, right? Which is, you know, allowing your, yourself to talk to yourself. But to do so, you have to stop thinking about your life and planning your life and trying to control your life. You have to let go of the controlling piece, which is what you're doing with that opening of the, of the, the third eye and the brain and letting it things in as you're just saying, okay, I'm here to hear, I'm here to listen, right? You're letting go of the controlling of all of those things and letting them show up. Right. And so in releasing the control, you're stepping out of that fear and that, that, that pattern of trying to keep yourself safe and you're saying, you know, okay, this is me. Nothing can hurt me. It's certainly not me, right? <laughs> Without my permission, right? And so, okay, I'm going to listen. I'm going to hear myself out because I, I don't listen to myself because everybody else is more important than me, right? And then you let that in. But then you can get from there, you get through the stuff, and then you start to get down to a place where you can really be still and really be focused. And now, now you're in a position where you can actually do magic right you can actually do energetic work you can actually make an impact an impact on the world through your beingness through your energy because you've gotten to that point and so you know do you have to spend 20 years doing it no it doesn't have to take 20 years right if you don't fight it right so Here's an interesting thought, right? This is a conversation I had with one of my students recently. And it's come up in conversations for, for Kathy and I over the last couple of weeks, many times, which has been very interesting. Uh, but we, she was talking about trying to do remote viewing. And uh, we were going through the process. And she was like, well, I'm trying. And I'm like, yeah, that's the problem. You've got to stop trying. And, and you know, Yoda was not wrong. You do or you do not. There is no try. Trying is efforting and convincing yourself that the efforting is actually going to make something happen. If you are efforting, you are not doing. Yes. Right? Yes. And, and so it's, it's like trying to push the river when really what you need to do is just get into the damn river, pick your feet up, and let it flow. Right? And, and that's the thing. So the only efforting there is is saying, oh, I want to be turned this way or that way in the river. That's it. Yes. Right. You, and all that requires is moving your hands in a different direction to redirect you. Right. That's it. <laughs> you know, you can't, you, you have to stop working so hard at it. And so, yeah, that, that would be the thing is, you know, step into the river and let the river take Oh my you. God. A hundred thousand percent. The trying, even if you just look at it in like at the law of attraction, trying, mm -hmm begets more trying you're just bringing more trying yeah. to you so you're stuck in that pattern of of struggle and meditation really teaches you the get still part is is wonderful and you're right it does come after a lot of not stillness and struggle and trying to figure out how to still your mind which is part of that trying so I think it's, it really teaches you to flow with what is. And we are all perfect, pure, divine beings right now. There's really nothing that we need to fix or change about ourselves, about our lives. It's all perfectly unfolding. And when we can get still enough to really get in touch with that, it's exactly that. You are the only thing that's standing in your own way. And you are the source of everything that you're searching for, that you're trying to create, that you're struggling toward. You are at the heart of all of that. It all comes from you. And meditation lets all of the things go that aren't serving you so that you can be that pure vessel, so that you can create the life that you desire. But the interesting thing that I've discovered is the more I go on the spiritual journey, the less I want I'm not really interested in creating the life I, I desire. It's now about 
everything that's in front of me is perfect, perfectly unfolding. How can I serve this present moment? I want to bring my light to it. I don't want the guy to fall in love with me and give to me. I want to make him feel so loved. I want to make the world feel loved. Like the guy is just this great icing on the cake. The money's a great icing on the cake. It's all for me to serve it. Yeah. That's what I've found. Yeah. So, you know, as you go through your spiritual journey, your, your goals, your desires, everything shifts right and and that that continues to happen as as far as you go in the journey as, as, at least as far as i've been i've been in it for 50 years now so you know it's been a long time and my goals have shifted a bunch over the years but um it's there is a way in which the work that we do and and i i even hesitate to call it work i mean it is work on one level but on another level, it is like we are, like our childhoods have imprisoned us in, a, in a, a maze of our own making in our brains. And that the process is now uh, um, the act of freeing ourselves, liberating ourselves from those belief structures that we put in place to try and explain with a child's mind what was happening in an adult world around us. And so it, it's really the act of self-liberation, right? It's the act of emptying the garbage out of the artisanal well that we are, right? And, and so it's, it's all of it, right? Um, and so when you're doing... So let's define the difference for people because, you know, this says transforming with meditation and mindfulness. We've talked a lot about meditation. Let's talk about mindfulness for a minute. Okay. Why don't you define for our listeners what mindfulness is in comparison to meditation? It's so interesting. So meditation can be so many things. It's really about... I love um, Joe Dispenza's definition of becoming familiar with, because that's really what's going on. You're noticing, you're noticing the thoughts that are coming up. You're noticing your, your body and where you feel you need to make adjustments. And mindfulness is taking that into our lives and being with life in the present moment and not thinking about what could be, what should be, the future, yesterday. So mindfulness, and you can do a mindfulness meditation of just noticing. It's more of just noticing in life. And meditation, I feel, is just becoming familiar with that process, what comes up when you're noticing. So, yeah. Yeah, and, and they're yeah. both super powerful. I find that a lot of times meditation becomes a spiritual practice that people set aside time for. And, and really, if you can't take this into your life and have spiritual practices that you're doing in real time with people, being mindful in real time when you're in conversation with someone, then it's really just a huge waste of time. And, and that's really, I guess, my main message for people would be, and my main kind of passion in life is how can we take this spiritual work that we do so intensely and with with so much like earnest intention of wanting to be our best selves how can we bring that into life everyday life making lunches for the kids yeah. all of that and doing that mindfully and and slowing down being intentional yeah yeah the uh, so the thing that's interesting to me today as compared to 20 some odd years ago to almost 25 years, 25 years ago when I started doing this work professionally um, is that, you know, with smartphones, we have become much more distracted, much less present, much less mindful. Right. And, and we kind of suck to begin with. So, you know, it's just gotten worse. And so, you know, one of the things that, uh, I mean, even back when I was training real estate agents in the nineties, right. You know, uh, one of the things that I used to teach them was what I call whole listening. And I, I didn't coin that term that came from somewhere else. I don't remember who I apologize. I would, I would give them 
reference, but I don't remember. Um, but whole listening is the act of being fully present with someone and hearing not just the text, but the subtext of the conversation, watching their body language, not having your nose in the phone while you're talking to them, right? Not playing your game while you're li half listening on the side, right? Um, you know, that act of being fully present with someone is such a gift. It is, it, I mean, literally people pay to go to a therapist to be listened to just because nobody is listening anymore. Everybody's talking, nobody's listening. And some people aren't even talking. They're just in their phones and they're just zoning out. You know, I was, uh, you know, back when I was still really highly burned out, I would say to people, I, I'm like, I'm done for the day. I'm going to let the TV watch me, right? Because I wasn't paying attention. If you would ask me the next day what happened on the shows that I was watching, I couldn't tell you because I was not paying attention. I was listening to them. I was playing my game on my phone and I would play my game on my phone even if my hands hurt because I didn't have anything else I was capable of doing, right? And that's the challenge, right? That's the thing that happens is that we get so deep into it that we lose coherency, right? And so that's why mindfulness is so important is it brings us back to ourselves and the meditation gets us quiet enough to come back to ourselves, right? So, uh, you know, everything you're talking about is, is kind of fundamental basics to having a good life, right? A thousand percent. Yeah, it is. It's so interesting. I, I feel like listening is incredibly undervalued. I feel like it is the way to serve the world in every moment. If you can show up and just deeply listen, not just to the person speaking in front of you, but to life itself, to what's going on in your own body, your own energy levels, be mindful of all of that, which sounds like a lot, but actually it's, it's not, it's really just come into your body, be present with it. Then you are, you are serving all the time. Life will inform you always. If you're not feeling clear, I, I feel like you're just, you're not listening enough. You're not slowing down. Yeah. I feel like I have to remind myself all the time and, and definitely my students, my, my coaching clients slow down, do one thing at a time, which is so difficult for us, but it will make, it'll transform your whole life. That, that one thing, just slowing down and listening to what is showing up right now with the, with the intention of wanting to bring what you want to see in life to life, not waiting for it to come to you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the other thing that most people don't realize, and I know you read tarot cards too, so um, you'll, you'll know this, uh, which is that when you get mindful, when you get present, you're going to notice that there are themes that run through everything. You'll watch two or three TV shows. They'll all have the same theme even if they're on different networks, you'll go out into the world and that same theme will be paying, playing out a, around you. You will do a tarot reading and that th same theme will show up in the tarot reading. Everywhere you go, that theme is happening and it happens throughout multiple levels of your life. It'll be, if it's playing out in your boardroom, it will be playing out in your bedroom. That is how it works in this life. And so when you become mindful, now you can see the big theme. You're not just stuck in the weeds of the individual situations. You can see the larger picture. You can see the bigger theme and you can work on the theme at a meta level instead of having to do all this work, doing all the individual pieces in so many different places. And you're just like, ah, right. You know, you don't want to, it's so much work, ah, right. But when you work on the theme, it's much less work. Right. But you can't do that if you're not aware of it and you won't be aware of it unless you're mindful. Yes. yes. Right? Yeah. And you yeah. literally tap into parts of the brain that allow you to see that bigger picture. And it's always been there. It's just that you're seeing right. it. And the things that 
were so confusing before and you felt so lost. Now it seems like all these synchronicities are happening that are speaking to you so clearly. And, and they've always been there. It's, it's just become so clear. So now you can follow that guidance. And you can call that whatever you want. You can call it intuition, psychic senses. It's, it's all information. And you are available to it when you're present. You're available to it when you're empty and present. And I think the main thing that meditation has given me after so much practice, and and you were talking about like when you tap into that stillness after the preliminary stuff has sort of been released, is this ability to come into a state of no self where, and not just in meditation, but when I'm out in the world and I'm doing things, I can tap into sort of an emptiness of self where it's all about the person in front of me or all about just life, whatever is showing up. And I can sort of put my own preferences, opinions, my own stuff completely to the side. And that is when magic starts totally unfolding because you are the thing, like we talked about in the very beginning that has gotten in the way. So all of that now is out of the way and life pours through you. It's, as I'm going on this journey, it's only become more and more magical and it pulls me as I'm sure it does for you as well. It's like this journey has me now yeah. for life and it just gets better and better. Yeah. And just when I think, oh, I've, I've got this secret thing, I've got this pill, I figured out this thing. I know now that that is absolutely not the truth. I never hang on to that anymore because it. I always get surprised with the next amazing thing that unfolds and shows me a higher way of being in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and I would absolutely echo that the, when you start on this journey, uh, pretty much everybody who starts on this journey is trying to get out of pain. That is the goal is I'm getting out of pain. And once you are out of pain, about half the people will stop there. Some, I, I might even go so far as to say maybe 60, 65% will stop there. Uh, and then, which is fine. If that's all you wanted was to be out of pain, totally fine. Go live your life, right? But the other 35% are like, oh, if I could do this much, what more could I do? Right. And that's where the addiction happens. Yes. Right. <laughs> You're just like, okay. Game on, right? <laughs> you just like go in full force. And and that's where you find the that's where the next spiritual teachers come from. That's where the next mindfulness masters come from. That's where the next everybody comes from, right? Uh is from those thirty five percent of the people who go, Ooh, what else could I do? Right. <laughs> and then then it becomes a lifelong journey of exploration and expansion and deep dives into self and pulling out all the crap and, and, and going, Ooh, what do I want next? And where do I go from here? And da, 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 right. Right. And so there's this whole nother layer of work that opens up, uh, which is, you know, yeah, it's work, but it's also play. Right. And so, you know, yeah, it's, it's good. So, you know, I want to, I want to talk to the people who feel like you're not quite ready for this work because I get that a lot from people, especially when they're looking at the inner peace program and they're just like, I don't know if I'm ready for that yet. I'm like, you know, we all come in at our own pace. So I want to say that. So, you know, there are various and sundry reasons why you may not be ready, but don't let it be fear. Mm. Don't let it be fear, right? Fear is, is always going to be there. Do not let the fear of the process stop you. The very first step in this work is getting past the fear. And so, you know, one of the things that I find is super helpful for getting past the fear is getting mindful, getting grateful, getting still, becoming present. Those things will do wonders for your fear because you'll be able to look at your fear when it comes up and goes, we're going to die. And you go, are we though? Are we really? I'm not Mm -hmm. sure we are. Look around. Nothing coming at our heads. No, we, we got food in our bellies. We got a roof over our heads. Not dying. But we're going to die. But are we? Right. The, The mindfulness part of you get is the part that goes, but are we really? 
And so, you know, that's why it's so important to do the work that you do. Yes. Right? So speaking of which, and, and with your permission, so Rhiannon and I were on the call before, before we started this and, and we were talking and, and uh, she's got a new program that she's launching. Um, and she was telling me about it and I was like, do you mind if I relanguage that for you? <laughs> because she did. And so what you don't know, Rhiannon, is that we're doing a whole series of things around spiritual practitioners and how to get your, your business off the ground and things like that. And so this is very timely topic. And so I've got your permission to both relanguage it for you and to uh, talk about it. And, um, you know, one of the things that spiritual entrepreneurs have a tendency to do is they talk about the how they're getting there and the what they're doing, but not the what the result is going to be, right? And what the benefit is for the people who are coming through. And so we sat down before we got started and I'm like, okay, tell me what your offer is and what you, what are you doing? And so on and so forth. And, and I was like, mm, are you open to a little coaching? <laughs> and she was, she was like, yeah, sure. So, um, I'm going to, I'm going to relanguage this for you. And in fact, um, you know, we're going to, I'm going to put this out there and Rhiannon, if you, if you, <laughs> I've, I'm actually shifting it right now for you too, because I was feeling into the energy of it. So, and you, you were okay with that as we went through it. So I'm just going to put it out there. And if you don't like it, we can, we can edit and do whatever we need to, to redo the offer. But, um, Rhiannon's doing the new offer and the offer is an activation circle. And it is a group program. And in this program, you are going to step in to yourself in a way that you have never done so before. You are going to learn how to get into that presence that we've been talking about. You're going to learn how to get into that meditative state we've been talking about. You're going to learn how to allow yourself to be with the things that are like that you're shoving down and don't want to look at and all that other stuff. You're going to learn how to do those things in a safe container with a master mindfulness coach working with you. You're going to be able to do this in community with others so that you're not on the journey by yourself. How amazing is that? You know, especially for those of you stuck in the Bible Belt, I'm so sorry. Uh, and, you know, this is a fantastic way to really get in and establish a practice. And, you know, Rhiannon's going to help you with that. She's going to help you figure out a way that a practice will work for you. These are, it, it, the calls are twice a month. They are 90 minutes each, and it, it's an opportunity for you to have a new experience and learn new techniques. And you guys know you would love to learn shit. You wouldn't be listening to this program if you didn't love to learn shit. And I can tell you right now, this woman's a fire hoser just like I am. So we know you love to learn shit, right? So you're going to learn shit in this program and that you can use for the rest of your life. It's amazing, and it's ongoing. So you, you will be able to develop a relationship with other people in the program. You'll be able to develop a relationship with Rhiannon. You'll be able to develop, most importantly, a relationship with yourself. So I would highly recommend this program right now is in a pre-launch mode. And if you sign up before the end of April, you're only going to pay $97 for it. And that is a steal of a deal for three hours a month. I, I in fact, I gave her shit about it. I was like, really, really? You're insane, right? And, and so that's a steal of a deal. And you've, you're, you'll keep that price for so long as you're in the program. That's, she's going to grandfather that in. The price will go up over time, I promise you, because she's going to start coaching with me. And I promise you, I'm going to start working with her on those prices. So the price goes up to two ninety seven dollars after that. However, if you are a Spirit Chirpa listener, because I negotiated this with her for you, because I love you and I want you to get what you need. If you don't enroll until after the end of April, she will still give you $100 off whatever that price is when you enroll. So that price will go to $297 May 1. But it will probably go up from there because I know that she's going to deliver more than I want her to for that price. And so I'm going to have to make her bring the prices up as she does that. 
because I'll be like, really? Is that what you're doing? You're giving away too much for that price. You've got to make sure there's a balance of giving and receiving. You've got to make sure you're not creating karmic debt. You've got to make sure that people show up so that they can get what they need and don't feel like they've gotten more than they paid for and therefore stop showing up. You know, all of these things, right? You know, you've heard me talk about this. It's so important to make sure you balance that giving and receiving. So what I'm going to say is get in while they're getting good at 97 bucks a month. Okay. And there will be a link to that in our show notes. So you can get that there. Do you have a link for them to go to now? Or there'll, there'll be a, a link on your home page yes, of your yes. website, right? Okay. So, so tell it's elmcenter.org. Spell that. E-L-M. E as in Eric. L as in lamb. M as in monkey. Center.org. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Eric Lamb Monkey yeah, Center. Eric Lamb Mon <laughs> Monkey Center. Yes, I and I, I have to say, <laughs> in five minutes, you changed my entire life. I I cried. Mm. I mean, I just I have to work with you now. If you were able to get me to shift, I mean, I've had so many people tell me to change my prices. I've had friends. I've had other coaches tell me what I should be charging and even saying, like you said, like you're crazy, but you put it in a way that just hit me. And I, I feel like I can step into abundance in a whole different way. You were a miracle and an answered prayer. I asked this morning for abundance in my life because I, I have money blocks and I feel like I came to you for this, to have this podcast, but that's not the only reason we met it was it was 30 seconds and I felt like I dropped a lifetime of of lack mentality uh, truly I am blown away that I I'm getting emotional again because it's it's been so long I mean my whole life I've had these blocks so I I was I'm still my mind is completely blown yeah that was amazing well, and I'm thrilled that I could do that for you. So we will, uh, keep, we will keep moving forward with this. And so you also have a YouTube I channel, do. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. What's so your YouTube channel? It's Upgrade to Uplift. You can just look me up. That's what okay. you'll find me. And, and it will say Enlightened Living Meditation Center. But, and you might be able to search it that way too. But it, Upgrade to Uplift is probably the better way. Okay. And, and that's actually what I looked at when I was deciding whether or not to have you on the show. And, uh, I took one look at her and was like, yep, girlfriend's the real deal. We're having on her on the show. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this is the thing. So, um, I, I'm so glad you could come. Thank you so much for being such a gracious guest. And I, I really appreciate you, you coming out and providing such great information for my listeners. And I will say thank you for them because I'm sure they got a lot out of this. And uh, guys, go and sign up for her class. You know, it's going to be amazing. And, uh, and we will, uh, you know, the, oh, I'm supposed to do a Kellyism. I don't have Jewel to, to, <laughs> to poke me. Um, so the Kellyism for the day is going to be... With great stillness comes great power. Mm. Oh, I love that. Yeah. With great stillness comes great power. Yeah. Inner and outer. That is perfect. Right? So, yeah. All right. And so that's all we have for this week. Thanks for being here. Uh, tune in next time when we add another uh, chapter into your guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I'm Kelly Sparta here with Rhiannon Smith. And you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, everyone.